In this video, I'm gonna tell you three ways that I use peppermint oil and the benefits that I get out of those uses. And I wanna talk about how Old Mate Peppermint has infiltrated my life to a point where I now use it on a daily basis. But before we go deep on these three things, I wanted to talk about the thousands of studies that have been done on peppermint oil. I think sometimes we turn to chemicals and pharmaceutical products just because that appears to be the norm because of what doctors are telling us. But we forget that natural remedies such as peppermint oil can actually help cure and improve our health and well-being. If you go to PubMed, which is the biggest online publication of medical studies, there is over a thousand compelling studies that have been done on peppermint oil. And I'm gonna share some of those with you today. Now, peppermint essential oil is made up of two core components. One is menthone and the other one is menthol, which is the most active ingredient. And essentially, these two things combined are antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiseptic, and anti-spasmodic. So internally and externally, it helps kill a whole bunch of bad stuff, and it helps with muscle spasms as well. But above all else, and what I'm really eager to drill in with you today is it is a massive brain booster, a proven brain booster, and a proven enhancer to physical performance. Now, disclaimer before we get into this video. My wife, Alice, she sells essential oils, including peppermint oil and she works for a company called doTERRA. Now we're gonna go speak to her in a second about why doTERRA versus another essential oil brand because I think that is important. But I need to be fair because I actually personally had roadblocks up when she came home two and a half years ago raving about these essential oils doTERRA including peppermint oil. Despite the fact that she goes deep on the way things are sourced and if they're as organic as they possibly can be and if their natural benefits are proven multiple times, I still had blocks up. And that's because, not, I didn't want to not support her, but it was more so I have a slow burn nature. It takes me a while to adopt things. So it took months for me to go deep on peppermint oil, in fact years, in the last six months, Come and ask your questions, is that alright? <laughs> yeah. So can you tell me, if someone was going to use peppermint oil, why would they use doTERRA's peppermint oil versus somebody else's peppermint oil? Uh, okay, so essential oils, the quality of is largely related to the quality of the plant. Okay, so the essential oils housed within the plant as a way of protecting it from pests, diseases, illness, it's like the immune system of the plant essentially. What can vary the quality of the essential oil is things that can oftentimes be seen as so minute, like when the plant is picked. For instance, the essential oils can travel through the plants, like blood through a human body. Uh, in certain times of the day, it will be in a different part of the plant. If the plant is harvested during that time, then the actual uh, quality or efficacy of the oil is going to be higher. So it's not just subject to the time of day that the plant is picked or harvested. Um, it's subject to the climate, the conditions and the place in which the plant grows. It's such a huge part of it. So if you're talking peppermint oil, like we could grow and we do peppermint out the back here in Australia, and it seems pretty nice. But the peppermint that's grown where we harvested in Washington is going to be of a much higher grade. The best quality plant, harvesting it at the utmost perfect time to have an oil where the constituents are balanced in a way that's the highest therapeutic grade. And then we bottle that up and present it to you in a way that's a rel you know, such a low, low cost for such high value. So that's why more people in the world trust doTERRA as an essential oil company than any other essential oil company in the world. I told you she was passionate. No. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're in my bathroom for the first use of peppermint oil I want to talk to you about, and that's hair loss. I have been losing my hair since my late teens and fighting the hair loss battle. 
and it's an absolute prick of a thing. Now there's a couple of ways you can fight hair loss through chemicals and that's finisteride and Rogaine. So one you put on your scalp and the other one you take orally, which I still take, but I try and mitigate my use of those things through natural remedies. So in order to maintain my push forward recedo, I use peppermint oil. And the way I use it is through my shampoo and conditioner, a couple of drops in, which I'll show you in a second. The way it basically works is it's got anti-properties in it, so antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiseptic, and essentially, according to the research, what it does is it gets into the hair follicles and it helps fight the DHT and stop, slow down, mitigate hair loss. So it's not going to grow your hair back or give you an afro, but it's going to help in your fight towards hair loss. Hair loss, hair loss. Now, if you've got dandruff, apparently it's very good for dandruff too. Or if you just like a really nice cooling effect in the morning, it's really good for that too. Now, essentially what I do is I put two drops of peppermint in either my shampoo or in my conditioner, and then I rub it into my hair and I leave it there for a couple of minutes. Now, be warned, one morning I went to wipe some water away from my eye in the shower. I still had some residue of peppermint oil on my fingers and it's really powerful stuff and I almost ripped my eye apart. So be careful of that. Now the second thing I use peppermint essential oil for is diffusing and I diffuse it for concentration. So when I'm working from home during the day, I'll have a diffuser blowing and what it does is it blows peppermint into the air and you inhale it aromatically and it gets into your system that way. And the way you do it, you get your peppermint oil, you put five drops in a diffuser, and then you turn the diffuser on, you put it in your room, and it blows this peppermint oil, which smells awesome as well, by the way, into your room, and then it gets into your system. Now, there's a couple of studies that I'm gonna walk you through, and I'm just gonna pull up my notes for this. Well, there's two studies done, right? There was one was done by the University of Cincinnati, and the other one was done by Willing Juiced University, I think that's how you say it. Just juiced, squeezing the juice, squeezing the juice. So there, that's a university. I think it's a religious university based out of um, Pennsylvania somewhere. So the University of Cincinnati, they found that the peppermint scent, prim primarily the menthol component. So we talked about that earlier, stimulates the hippocampus area of the brain, which is sort of back here and that controls mental clarity and memory. The odor triggers you to wake up and pay attention. So that's pretty compelling stuff right there. Now the Wheeling Squeeze and the Juice University found that drivers exposed to peppermint health benefits were more alert, less tired, more motivated and less irritable. I think we could do with that for drivers in Australia when they're driving past cyclists. We need a little bit of a peppermint oil spray we can get them with. They found that peppermint slowed the release of stress hormone cortisol and kept drivers calm yet awake. So I haven't per personally used peppermint oil on a long drive, but it sounds like it's something that I should be doing. So that is number two, concentration and blowing it through a diffuser in your home or work environment. So if you go on Google and type in peppermint oil and improved physical performance, you'll get an absolute shitload of information, compelling information, which points to peppermint oil improving performance. Now, I'm gonna pull up my notes again because it does get a little bit technical and I wanna make sure I get it right, but I've been doing my research. This is proven. Peppermint oil re relaxes the bronchial smooth muscle. Now look that up, the bronchial smooth muscle. It, it, your bronchial goes down here and the smooth muscle is sort of like the inner lining of your bronchial and it relaxes it. So what that means is that it enables you to get more oxygen down into your lungs. Now, it also causes an increase in the ventilation and brain oxygen concentration and a decrease in blood lactate levels. You know, because it's got all these anti-properties, the anti antibacterial, antimicrobial, obviously lactate is something the body doesn't want, tries to get rid of. 
So what this also means is that it improves muscular energy metabolism because it's helping mitigate the onset of fatigue by reducing the levels of lactate in the blood. So that's pretty compelling stuff. Now I'm gonna pull up another study here. This is from ATP Scientific. They did a study which revealed significant improvement in a number of physical variables after oral administration of peppermint essential oil. So they had 15 in the experimental group and 15 in the control group, okay? And here is statistically, they did some tests with grip force, standing vertical jump and standing long jump. Now the grip force test was quite compelling, a 36.1% improvement in the amount of force that they could put into their grip. Standing vertical jump increased 7% on average and standing long jump 6.4%. Now they also did additional tests, I'm gonna to link to this study below the video, on the respiratory system which showed increases in the flow rate of oxygen in and out of the lungs, okay? No brainer there. And when I think about my own personal use of peppermint oil, okay? So I put two drops under the tongue before I go out and do a ride. And immediately I feel my whole airways open up, even my sinus area. Now that sensation lasts about 10 to 15 minutes and then it sort of starts subsiding. But then what I notice, because I ride for long periods, say three to four hours is you really feel the effect when you go into an anaerobic state. So anaerobic is when you're breathing more, and that's where I could really feel the peppermint oil and its impact on ventilation and my body's ability to deliver more oxygen to the working muscles. Now to go a little bit deeper on this, in February this year, I did a VO2 max test. Now link to that video below this one. But before that test, I took two drops of peppermint oil, okay? and in that test, I scored a VO2 max of 84.2, which is pretty significant. For comparison, Chris Froome in his Tour de France peak is 88.4, and Lance Armstrong was 84. Now I personally have deficiencies in my ability to reach my VO2 max at threshold, so that's why I don't ride in the Tour de France, but it certainly demonstrates that I've got a very good ability to take up oxygen and deliver it to the working muscles. Now I can't prove that by taking two drops of peppermint before that test I got a much bigger number or a slightly bigger number, but it is quite compelling to think of all this information that I've just shared with you and the research that I've done today and to think that I used peppermint oil before that test and scored a very high number. So it's for all those reasons that I will continue to use peppermint oil for eternity. One, dropping in my shampoo and conditioner for hair loss. Two, diffusing in my work environment. And thirdly, dropping it under my tongue to open up my respiratory system, improve my cardiovascular health, and also my alertness when I'm doing sport. If you want to go deeper on peppermint, let's have a conversation below this video. And thanks for listening.